good morning chairperson uh, good morning dear president good morning next uh, incoming president and my dear colleagues uh, this is an investigative uh, uh, paper uh, questions are something which we use routinely in our uh, practice singer single or in multiple ways uh, it uh, it is presumably uh, supposed to provide rotational instability uh, stability exclusion of cross links can what it is uh, called as can possibly cause what is known as quadrilateral shift or a parallelogram effect as shown in the picture down here there have been innumerable biomechanical studies which have either supported or uh, refuted the use of uh, cross link that is transverse connectors in our uh, 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 in our practice but there has not been a single study that has evaluated the need for cross links Uh, in clinical situations, in clinical situations, there are a lot of questions whether to use crosslinks or not. If at all we use whether to use single or multiple, and if at all we use where do we put the crosslink, either at the top end, at the center, at the center, or at the lower terminal portion. So the aim of this particular study was to critically assess if crosslinks are necessary adjuvants in the current state of our posterior spinal constructs, which basically means pedicle screw rod constructs. this is a retrospective study this is the study period and uh, cases uh, uh, belonging to various etiologies were included uh, there were these the levels that were uh, checked and in none of the constructs were cross links incorporated two of my uh, uh, spinal fellows were not involved in the work initial work were did the study what we did study here was the immediate post op ap and the uh, ap x ray at the last follow up we checked for two things one is rotational instability now nash and mode technique is a very well established and validated uh, way of uh, analyzing rotation of the pedicle the other thing we looked for was if there was any quadrilateral shift that is called the parallelogram effect in any of the patients uh, in the follow up the average follow up was about 15 months and we assessed inter observer and intra observer reliability there was a proportional representation of all kinds of etiology that we see in our day to day practice degenerative being the maximum uh, the number of cross links that we use in day to day practice depends upon the number of levels which we refuse it may vary from one cross link to sometimes up to four cross links that i have seen in my uh, in my uh, experience and now in this particular study there were 707 segments that were used to study ranging from a uh, one level fixation to up to 15 level fixation 15 level fixation meaning you need to put more cross links uh, the results were astounding uh, but believable there was no change in rotation in any of the patients x rays there was no parallelogram effect in any of the patients x rays there was a high degree of inter observer and intra observer reliability now uh, let me justify uh, etiology wise with justification from the literature so this is a degenerative uh, pathology and you can see this is the immediate post op x ray and this is an x ray after 3 years there is absolutely no change in rotation there is no parallelogram effect another very bad degenerative scoliosis no change in rotation this is after 2 and 1/2 years the follow up is 2 and 1/2 years this is immediate post op this is 2 and 1/2 years no change in rotation Now, why does this happen? Why there is no need for cross links? The reason is the process is stiffening process, rendering the spine an inherent stability. In many situations, decompression without fusion is the choice of treatment in this subset of patients. Now we talk of unilateral fixation. It is putting screws and rod only on one side. We talk of dynamic fixation. You know, where the rod moves. So any kind of additional fixation in terms of cross links, in addition to particular screw rod constructs, looks very foolhardy. Now coming to trauma, where it is maximally used. Now this is a case where you know it is a AO type C. It is a rotationally unstable fracture in a young patient. Uh, I would I decided to do posterior and anterior because of the significant instability in rotation. Now I did a short segment fixation in this particular patient. It was a young patient to save segments. Okay, what what happened? See, did I did I make blunder? That was a nightmare uh, for that particular day. But what causing have avoided this? I don't know. Uh, I was really worried about this patient, and the minute we did anterior, everything fell in place. There is no need to cross link at all. So, what does literature say? Cross links may not be necessary if rotational stability is intact, long segment posterior fixation is performed, or if you are uh, doing an anterior reconstruction. 
addition of cross links increases the stiffness of a short segment posterior construct in a carpet turbine model however the study also states that cross links do not restore baseline stability and anterior reconstruction or long posterior because of through fixation strongly recommended by author to restore baseline stability our experience is in agreement with this particular study in our patient you see the parallelogram effect disappeared once the re anterior reconstruction was performed a week later now coming to infection this is a highly unstable situation the multi level discrepancy is big lacunae in the anterior column severe kyphosis this patient had a uh, front and back surgery this is immediate post op this is after 2 years absolutely no change in rotation by action no technique no parallelogram effect no need for crossing this is the etiology where the cross links are highly recommended to maintain the re rotation effect that produced by correct kyphosis Absolutely no change in rotation. You can see this, uh, uh, you know, osteoplasty which was done, and this is after two years where it is very well, you know, uh, fill up the gap. Absolutely no change in rotation. No need for a crossing. A similar situation, same degree of rotation maintained. No change in correction. No need for a crossing. If you see, thought those were uh, fixed at multiple levels, at almost every level. This is a uh, very bad curve, 102 degree curve. No use of crosslinks. Uh, you know a staggered placement of screws absolutely no need for crossing no change in rotation so our uh, uh, results are echoed by wood et al the stability of constructs in cadaveric models with various permutations and combinations including sublaminar wire hooks pedicle screws and crossings were used by this particular group what did they say they said that additional of addition of crossings added negligible rotational stability to the models with pedicle screw construct they do not use recommend the use of crossings in long scoliosis constructs where transit fixation has been performed rotational stiffness increases by 215% with pedicle screw fixation and 90% with hoof fixation the time is over i'll quickly come to the last please uh, so in, in many etiologies there is no need for use of crossings prominent of cross cause is not uncommon especially in thin individuals it causes corrosion it causes non union the definite uh, effect uh, to the uh, uh, you know to the economics and time this is the amount of money spent in india our cross links for 3.25 crores was spent cross links last year and when it comes to time 40 main man days were utilized last year to use of cross links this can be better this money can be better put into iai iai joint and bone joint day so cross links are unnecessary there are worldwide implications of not using cross links in the for the surgeons the way we practice spine surgery for the patients the way, you know it saves cost and it may not the paper may not shake the earth but it will definitely shake the industry which is a billion dollar industry thank you thank you doctor you have asked one minute and you can have one few questions if possible can anyone ask any question to him please please Uh, we excluded 39 patients, so about uh, 215 odd patients were analyzed. 215 plus 39, 39 patients did not see the pedicles very well. That's important uh, because people said that those bad results were. No, no, these were not bad results. These were those cases where still the parallelogram effect, which so the pedicles not seen very well. And we don't use crossings at all. So uh, any objective method used to say that there is no parallelogram effect. So the, we did the national most study check for the rotation. No, 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 no. Predominated by the male and another one that is about 50 years predominated by the females. 
At present, there is no specifically design implant for the unicondylar flexure femur, and surprisingly, they have never been classified separately. But there are certain classification systems which include unicondylar flexure femur, and the most widely accepted one is the Muller Safe system, which includes unicondylar flexure femur as the B1, B2, and B3 category. So we are having the two options: the, the conservative and the surgical. And the uh, conservative is in the general consideration of the femoral medullary cusp. And this, but conservative treatment is well documented for the angulation, joint contracture, knee instability, union, non-union, and post-traumatic arthritis. So the uh, treatment choice is the surgery, and uh, these are the various options which uh, we are having presently. And the most uh, commonly used one is the 6.5 millimeter cancellous screw. But there are several studies documents that uh, cancellous screw and three plates are also fails with the non-union. Objective of our study was to evaluate the anti-therapeutic outcomes for the unicondylar fracture femur with the fixation done with the E-shaped cannula plate, and it was a prospective study. We include skeletal mature two cases of unicondylar fracture femur, and the patient giving consent for the study. We exclude uh, open injuries from our study. We make a medial, anti-medial, lateral, or anterior incision depending on the fracture pattern. After attending the articular fibrillation, we fix the temporal with the help of the K wire, and then bend the plate. And applied with the help of 3.5 millimeter cortical and the 4 millimeter cancellous screws. Postoperatively, in 48 hours, uh, active movement and the required sub strengthening exercise was done. On third postoperative, assisted active mobilization was done. Partial weight wearing was done around 10 12 weeks and uh, full weight wearing was tolerated, uh, as allowed as tolerated. Functional outcome was evaluated at 12 months with the help of the scoring system. So, we studied 17 cases, out of which 16 were male and one patient was female, and the average. Uh, at the time of surgery was 37 years. Most of our cases were from road traffic accident. Our second cases were of a HOPAS pattern. The five cases were lateral and the medial each. As a result, sir, we were having the nine cases which were categorized as excellent result with the mean gear score of 89 units and they uh, considered more than 50 percent. Uh, our five cases were considered as satisfactory with the mean gear score of 80 units and they were around 30 percent. So overall, it, more than 80 percent were having the good results. In terms of range of motion, the lateral femoral bundle were having a good range of motion. Uh, the least one was found in focus. But none of our patients developed any ablation, rotation, or loss of particular congruency within this 12 month of follow-up. These are some cases for you. This is the 24-year-old community lateral femoral bundle lecture. This is the post-operative x And the final clinical photographs. Another case of 62-year male community medial femoral bundle fracture. Post-operative x-rays. Clinical photographs. First clinical photograph is taken at 15, day, 15 days at time of suture removal and another at the final follow up. Third case of 35 year male terminated lateral femoral coronal, coronal fracture at Hop Hospital. Titan, post operative, and the final clinical photograph. So, why we choose the D shaped calcaneal plate? Because we assume that it is having the increasing surface area for bone fixation, it provides high strength low profile that reduces the risk of soft tissue irritation. It acts as a large washer that is suitable for the community or osteoporotic bone. It has having multiple holes that provide a strategic placement of screws and it can, plate can be controlled to fix on either surface, little and medial as well. But we are having such a limitation of our history. It is a non competitive history. We are having the very low, uh, less uh, short drop. It was having the small number of cases. So in final, the results are promising at our institute and it could be a good option for the treatment of unicondylar uh, distal femoral fracture. But a randomized controlled trial with a large number of, number of cases and the long term study is required to validate our result. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for this question. Sir. Uh, can I put you a question? Ah, what is the length of the plate? It's just a deep plate. Length of the plate shape is a different. Exactly. Never measure it, sir. Never measure it. Never measure Yes, sir. In any case, cannot be broader than the wider than the calcium itself? Yes. Obviously. Obviously. You are using the yeah, calcium obviously. Which cannot be wider than the Obviously, sir. Uh, many of the unicondylar factors expect beyond the size of the plate. How do you manage such cases? Sir, uh, we really do not uh, would like to include that cases in our uh, study. Because uh, if there is a metaphysical involvement in that case, then uh, uh, we need uh, some other mode of fixation like uh, pleating. That's different. That's different. You cannot use. So you have to exclude those cases from this study. This study is only for the unicondylar. That so is why we. I'm talking about unicondylar fractures. Unicondylar fractures, 
they do not uh, limit to condemn the extent partly into the metaphysical area. And if the play cannot go beyond the metaphysical area, the fixation cannot be as good as expected. Definitely, sir. Okay. That's why it's important. Have you, have you before starting the session, have you explained what is the perspective study? Yes, sir. Solely and solely, sir, you need to that doesn't, uh, the factor doesn't affect the metaphysical reason, sir. Okay. If it is going there, then we want you to calculate it. If you include it on the essence, I think, why not? If you select it, then what do you have to perform the observation? Yes, sir, we selected only those cases. The 17 cases that, that we have to done were uh, ideal for our surgery. We did not spell out the inclusion, that's why we did it. Once you have decided that you include this one, why are you going to perform the fixation in all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What about the most of the remote fixation? If you are getting, if, sir, if you are having visit fixation, then you can mobilize the three days. But uh, no, sir, we are getting to uh, about 10 to 12 weeks, sir. Not before that. And how many you were able to achieve satisfactory fixation? What will you do? That was basically that's why I'm asking. So more than 80% of the patient was satisfied with the surgery. Nothing, nothing special. I have done 20 cases, either physical case or the case of the body. Your surgery is 17 cases. Yes, sir. That's why we need, sir, other study regarding this. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll give you a plate and take 3.5 screws. And I feel that at the soft bone, at the device, the three bone. 3.5 screws are very, very thin. Yes, sir. In comparison to 6.5 cancerous screws. I agree, sir. And if you fix up cancerous screws, you will get a better fixation than this. Yes, sir. I agree. There is a paper which showed that the 6.5 uh, millimeter screw is having the highest strength compared to 3.5. But this plate uh, is a locking plate, and uh, uh, our aim was to search for those patients which were not able to get fixed with the 6.5 millimeter screws. Because if there is a definitive pattern, how could we apply this one type of screw if there is no area to purchase the bone? But if this is a dish plate having the larger surface area, 13 holes are there with the locking pattern. So if you are able to get uh, some fruit there, then it will be good enough for the patient because the main aim is to maintain the particular congruency there. The Hofa fracture and the posterior. Definitely, sir. Uh, in uh, our two cases, our one of the senior children use cashless screws. Besides this, out of these 17 cases, in, in these 17 cases, in Hofa sudden that are the seven cases, in two uh, cases, uh, our one of the senior children use cashless screws. But uh, in the rest of the five cases, we won't use. You were able to achieve it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the top plate, yes, sir. from the lateral side? Yes, yes sir. as well as uh, from the medial side. See, buttressing is equally important in such kind of fractures. Like and when you buttress, the length of the plate has to be longer than the desired one. I agree. I, I agree, sir. Yes. But uh, uh, actually, uh, all these plates uh, uh, presently available are uh, applied through the lateral side. This is no plate to, uh, to be applied on the medial side. What we are having either we are applying the DCPs, getting bold, and it is applied on the medial side. This plate is directly applied on the medial side, sir. Okay. And there is no further manipulation. Thank you very much to you. Thank you, sir. And this work needs further, Definitely. further analysis. Definitely. I call upon Dr. Shiva Prasad Jagannathan, and he will speak on radiological and CD evaluations of vestibular cartilage and NTHR, road of approaches, post operative analysis. Dr. Jagannathan, please. Respected chairperson. Senior orthopedic surgeon, medical place. Good morning. My topic is about post op analysis of radiological and CT evaluation of hostile work placement in total utility placement and to find out where approach really plays a significant role in it. Aim to radiologically evaluate the hostile component placement in patients who underwent TH at our hospital and to analyze the role of approach on cup placement. Hostile cup portion is the most important step in the HR. Any discrepancy in cup placement is to early dislocation, impingement, and increased bed. Cup placement is usually done by free and technique, which may predispose to model element. And before going into mystery, I would like to explain what intonation and version is. 
Inclination is the angle made between line joining the superior and inferior lip of the astrobulum and the horizontal, which is also known as subduction angle, approximately equal to 45 degree. And version is the angle between face of the astrobulum and the sagittal, which is approximately equal to 50 degrees. Our study is a comparative re retrospective study between posterior and lateral approaches and whether X and between the X-ray and CT, whether X-rays are a satisfactory measure of the cup alignment. At the hospital, we operated on 41 nerves with 19 with lateral approach and 22 with posterior southern approach. First operatively, X-ray CT were taken and necessary precautions regarding positioning were taken. We abolished the confirm confirming factors like patient and table mole positioning, like uh, pelvic tracking and uh, table tilt, and transverse vestibular ligament was used as a guide. Among 41 lips, first surgeon operated on 27 lips, 19 in lateral approach and 8 posterior, and second surgeon on 14 lips, all were posterior approach. The relationship between transverse vestibular ligament and version this image shows total version where anterior posterior are visible equally. And this one, anterior thalus is visible more behind the curve, which is anti version, and posterior thalus is visible more, which is a retroversion. The inclination and version are compared with the safe zone of the neck. Levenic so safe zone is when the anti version is between 5 to 25 degrees, and cup inclination is between 30 to 50 degrees. Levenic et al. concluded that within this zone, the rate of dislocation is reduced to 1.5%. Compared to 6% outside this zone, outside this zone, and we aimed at the anterior of 15 degrees and inclination of 40 degrees. And post-op measurements are taken with inclination AP X-rays and version using both X-ray and CT. We used the Wilbur method to analyze the version of carbon AP X-rays. This picture showing inclination AP X-rays with the line joining the superior inferior to the horizontal. And version of the CT scan, transfer CT. Angle made between the face of the astrobulum to the sagittal. And the version in X-rays is measured using the Wilmer formula. Wilmer formula is, is S by TL. Where S is the short axis of the ellipse of the curve. And TL is the total length of the short axis. And the results of lateral approach depicted here with mean inclination in 42.47 and mean version in X-ray is 15.53 with mean version in CT scan is 15.21. And we depicted the result in the chart with 5 and 12 outside the safe zone of learning. Surprisingly, in posterior approach, in first series, two cases are retroverted to CT, which were not descent on the X-rays, and in the next series, two cases are retroversion. The results of posterior approach are depicted here with the mean inclination of 44.5 degrees, 0 degrees, and mean western in X-rays is 13 degrees. But the version in CT scan falls to 19 degree due to 4 retroverted curves having negative values. And the results here are depicted in the chart with 4 cases on the negative side, which are retroverted curves. The mean inclination is 42.5 degree in lateral and 44 degree in posterior approach, with version X-ray is 15.5 in lateral and 30 degree in posterior approach, and version C scan is 15.2 in lateral and 9.8 in posterior, with target version of 15 degree. This is a post CT scan showing retroverted curve where the face of the, the uh, facing posteriorly with minus 2 degree retroversion. Another post of CT showing retroverted curve. Conclusion Even though the four cases are retroversion, but the approach did not affect the conclusion statistically. The P value is insignificant with 0.3882. But the lateral approach is closer to average level value in both inclination and version. Posterior approach. Inclination angles are good, but it veered more towards retroversion. The retroverted curves can be missed by the routine AP X-rays. Coming to the discussion part, astrobulum cup placement is influenced by the various factors. CT is not usually done to verify the cup placement. Only the mild position of the curve or approach cannot be blamed for dislocation. Other four patients patient with retroverted curves have not had, have not had any dislocation till date. Two to three years follow up on one with one year and one with six month post op Take home message. Studies with bigger sample size need to be done and longer follow up required. The Wilmer method of evaluating curve version seems to be a useful and anti tool in this case, but X ray is not reliable to differentiate between T tool and anti version. Thank you.
paper is open for discussion. Is there any variation in the... Why don't you identify yourself? I am Dr. Nishant from Chennai. Is there any variation in patient positioning of different approaches? Is there any variation of position, patient positioning in the table? While uh, placing the patient on the table, we have to uh, lateral positioning. If there any pelvic uh, sag or tilt is there, it will affect the cup position. Sir, totally the part of the Yes, sir. Out of how many you operated? Where is the mic? Yes, sir. Can you give the mic? Mic, yeah, mic. I mean, you operate, say, 100 cases in certain duration. Yes, sir. So, have you evaluated? All I evaluated 41 patients, sir. No. I operated... Just listen. Yes, listen. Right, understand what I'm talking You have done certain number of cases in certain time. Yes, sir. Now, these 41, are out of those certain number of patients? Yes, sir. If that, then what percentage of patients would be retrospective? This would be evaluated. The, the point is that any study with less than 80 percent evaluation or of evaluation doesn't stand at all. Okay. That's the, so if you say that yes, you get 45 and you could evaluate 41, fine, that is acceptable. But if you say it is 100, you operate 100, 41 evaluated, and it becomes the good study. That's, that is why I am asking. It's important to know that how many were operated in that time and how many were evaluated. All were done at that time. Okay. Number two, in your one of the group, axis and uh, TD, there was a lot of variation in the uh, uh, inversion measurement, 13 and 9.8. Yes, sir. While in other group, it was that variable, x-ray measurement, whether you do it with lateral approach or you do it with uh, posterior approach, it should be the same. Same. So why in one group, you have to do that because it is problem for one group and why it is so. It is not in one group sir. In lateral approach, X-ray and CT measurements are almost equal. But in a posterior approach only. That is, that is what I am asking. Why in lateral approach there is no variation in CT and X-ray measurement? Because X-ray measurement and CT measurement is the same for both approach. Whatever you approach, it is the X-ray measurement criteria is going to be the same. So what, why the difference in one group and why not in the other? Sir, in, because in posterior approach, the uh, retortion is more, sir. Retortion comes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Jayamrathan. Thank you, sir. For your presentation. I call upon Dr. Shubhanshu Mohanty. He is the next speaker and he is speaking on orthoplastic inversions with hemophilia in Indian scenario. Dr. Mohanty, please. Yeah. Anurachi Anna, sir. Respected teachers and dear friends. I pay tribute to Dr. Kitty Dolakya, on whose name this session has been named and I had the opportunity to work with him and learn the techniques of orthoplasty from him. Now, hemophilic orthopathy patient, they are disabled with severe pain, deformity, and they have considerable functional disability because of end-stage arthropathy. And total general orthoplasty that reduces the pain, reduces the tendency to bleed, and also improves the function of these patients. And our problem in our country, because of the late presentations, because of lack of the awareness, and cost of the factors involved, they present with a bone loss and religion like situation and hence they require special surgical considerations. The objectives of the present study is to evaluate the preoperative clinical radiological profile of these patients to study the functional outcomes, complications and patient satisfactions in persons with hemophilia undergoing orthoplasty. This is a retrospective review of prospectively collected data in our tertiary care center between June 2009 and May 2012. We operated on 9 patients and with 17 joints. The average follow-up period in 2 years, 2.1 years. The pre-operative medical records were reviewed and radiological screening of hemophilic arthropathy using Patterson criteria which has been described in the literature of them and bone loss was assessed, sometimes using CT scan as well. The pre-validated widely used joint scores are used like knee society score, hospital professional surgery score, Harry's age score, etc. both pre and post operatively and in the later follow-up. The patient satisfaction and complications were evaluated as well. Factor replacement, the protocol in our institute is to give 100% correction on the first two days, followed by 80% correction in the following two days, then 40% correction in the fifth days. Then later on, we gave factor on demand. That means whenever the patient required, it was assessed by the hematologist and factor was infused. The average expenditure for factor replacement was about 1.57 lakhs Indian rupees. The special surgical considerations avoided final anesthesia because of hemophilia to prevent a bleed. The 
spectrum varied from arthrophythosis still about grossly unstable joint there is widening of the femoral intercondyle and nodes medial lateral diameter was more than the interposterior diameter the lateral subduces and patella patella baha sometimes patella was other end of the femur also we need to recognize bony overgrowth and at certain places we need to recognize the bony defects also one need to keep the revision component standard on the table antibiotic product cement was used in every case because of high rate of infection in this group of patients and meticulous and tight wound closure was required to prevent hematoma the results average is these are young group of patient about 41.6 years total knees were 11 total hip were 6 one bipolar arthroplasty one revision for peripsetic fracture in bipolar arthroplasty these are medical comorbidities associated with the patient one had hiv three had hepatitis c and one had a drug resistant tuberculosis the radiological score using partition criteria was average 11.5 with four cases presenting revision like situation because of severe bone loss like type 3 ori in two and type 1 person of the big such strict classification two cases all patients were satisfied with pain relief and the function of the patient these are the results of total replacement using oxford hip score and harris hip score compared to preoperative post operative with the scores were high and these are the results of total knee replacement using oxford hip score hss score and knee society score and knee society function score as well there is considerable improvement in the scores post operatively compared to preoperative status here is a 47 years old male factor 9 deficiency left hip arthritis and we had to put bone graft here to restore the center of rotation bring it down and out still we accepted that amount of shortening the right knee was involved and hence right knee replacement was done and that was the end result of the function at the end of 3 and 1/2 years of this patient there is a patient 36 year old male ankylosed hips left side in the knee ankylosis right side fibrous ankylosis both the hip replacements were done the knee was again fibrous ankylosed in 10 degree of flexion deformity so conventional process was used bio plastic process was done in the process and he accepted a little patella bar which is seen in the post operative x ray he had a functional range of movements after the surgery and restoration of the function of the patient here is a 42 years old male Operatively, who are working with both the axillary crutches, the activity is considerably limited. There is an extensive bone loss, as you can see here, both the AP and lateral loss. We did a CT scan, and CT scan shows there is widening of the intercondylar arch, and there is almost bone absence. And those are the instability you see both medial lateral and anterior posteriorly on the table. But fortunately, the collateral ligaments are intact, and hence we have to do a little constant processes that you can see in both the AP and lateral views, and that is alignment is restored and joint stability is. and that is a function at one half years of the pod of this young group of patients last is a 30 years old in fact a deficiency and it is a gross arthrofibrosis and there is a fixed flexion deformity about 120 degrees and there is a fibrosis of the joint as well we did three stage procedure first we released the soft tissues did a surgical cast correction second stage we did the trotnia arthroplasty still 40 degree of flexion deformity was there in the third stage we did again cast correction and at the end of the end of two years we did the operation for the permanent deformment this is in the letter of positive with multi drug resistant cause and hepatitis c positive the complications were one patient died three days post operative due to acute myocardial infarction there was no superficial or deep infection no implant loosening and no hemoptysis at the latest follow up delayed wound healing was seen in three cases to secondary surgery one patient developed pressure sore due to continuous use of the brace which healed eventually This is the literature review which shows in a wild literature that 90% survivors at the end of 5 years and 83% at the end of 10 years. Infection being the most common mode of failure and overall infection rate is about 10% and in HIV positive patients it is to the extent of 16%. So to control arthroplasty in persons with hemophilia, technically challenging, one need to have a team of changing hematologists, orthopedic surgeons, physiotherapists and occupational therapists. We need a good immunohematological facilities with good laboratory support to assess the factor. Doctor can improve the quality of life in this group of patients, and we presented our early experience in this country. And this first report of its kind from India in this high-cost, low-volume disease. I thank you for your patient care. Thank you, Dr. Mohanty. We have been looking for. Yes. And after surgery, did you get any time not bleeding or something like that? 
So in that particular joint, they didn't find any more rating, but on the other side, they have ratings as usual, and we have to give factor correction, eye certification, and mobilization as much as possible. One of the patients we, we had done the right heat replacement, he developed this was bleed after five days after surgery, and uh, we have to give factor correction to them, give eye certification, and all these things. That is a normal follow up in a hemophilia. Uh, were there patients with inhibitors? This the group of patients which we had operated didn't have any inhibitors. But one of the patients they had developed a inhibitor post operatively because after continuous factoring for sometimes they develop inhibitors. Then we had to give that uh, factor uh, eight bypassing agent, factor seven, eight, or something other. Like it is very expensive. But sometimes you know, we have to give frozen plasma or uh, you know cryoprecipitated etc. to these patients. These patients have osteoporosis in the tibia. Yeah. Lot of, um, uh, lot of mobility. Yes. And once you do a replacement, the bone of the test is not that good. Yeah. Have you taken some measures to take care of that? No, we have not measured specifically for the osteoporosis like the excess skin or something like that. But these two patients, they do have osteoporosis. But even once uh, the replacement is done, once they start weight bearing and all, slightly to better their bone plate should improve with the weight bearing uh, in this patient. But we have not done any measurement of osteoporosis. And you have not treated the osteoporosis? No, we have not treated them. So this is about uh, uh, nine months surface follow and longer follow is about four more than four years. Which is about average. The mean yeah. hospital stay is more. Yeah. The hospital stay is more compared to other patients. You know, average stay is about a month after the surgery, and we did do little uh, delayed wound uh, uh, suture removal, and there are some superficial wound complications as well in this patient. Thank you, Dr. Mahati. Thank you, sir. Uh, I suppose Dr. Sarah Gupta is not present. Yeah. So we... Respect to chairperson, uh, professors, and colleagues. Uh, my topic is on arthroscopic assistance and double bundle PFL reconstruction using loop symmetry diagnosis at a graph in parallel instability. We know that the fetal instability is a painful disabling condition and if you don't treat them, you can reach the fetal of femoral arthritis. I know that a lot of procedures, procedures are described in the literature. However, the no single operation is initially successful. Even success rate of fetal realignment and lateral release is reported to be 65%. And because they do not tackle the primary pathology. So the primary pathology means fetal instability is an EPFL, which gives 40 to 80 percent of total medial resting force. It also helps the uh, petal to be stabilized by the, uh, from full extension to approximately 20 degrees of flexion, and where there is no bony clearance. There is uh, a lot of procedures described for MPFL reconstruction using different kinds of maps and techniques. In MPFL reconstruction alone, here has got a high success rate of 83% to 93% in the recent researches. With this background, our aim of the study is to study the complete radiological assessment to find out the pre-existing bony and soft tissue causes for the petal instability and also to study the clinical functional outcome of a PFL using arthroscopic assisted double bundle semi-dinosis using single bundle tunnel technique. And total number of cases are 25 and most of them are females suspected and considered by the binary trauma symptoms stage from 15 months to 30 years. One of the, all the patients underwent X-ray, it helps in finding out osteochondral fragments. In our series, we had eight cases. And MRIs were done in all the cases, it helps in finding out the subluxations and it also helps in finding out the MPFL. And most of the cases were pinned out or the tower in our cases. All the patients underwent radiological evaluation. The install index, at, uh, our series it was 1.12, that none of these patients were more than 1.2, which required any tuberosity procedures. And also, sulcus angle was measured to find out the trochlear dysplasia, where in our series it was found to be mild trochlear dysplasia in four cases, but still didn't do any retractopacity or any additional procedures. We measured compass angle and also the uh, lateral petal artery angle to measure the uh, subluxations and also how much is the medial opening before do the reconstruction. And also, Q angle was measured. And our group, it ranged from 10 to 17.5. And distal realignment is required if it is more than 20 degrees. So none of our patients required in distal realignment in addition to the medial petal femoral ligament reconstruction. All the patients underwent arthroscopy before doing the reconstruction. It helps in finding out the cartilage uh, damage to the petal, which is a pronostic factor in the functional outcome, which can be expected to the patient. And also, we had four patients of uh, loose bodies, which helps in uh, 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 removal of uh, lo uh, loose bodies, which helps in permitting the instability, which they had additional to the petal instability.
and the surgical technique we used a two incision technique where a small incision was used for the graft harvesting another incision was used to 3 to 4 cm between the petal and the femoral so that skin began to be mobilized to both upwards and downwards for the both petal fixation and femoral fixation and usually big pen was inserted in the petal or uh, in the middle one part of the uh, petal which is more anatomical a uh, semi tonus graft was harvested and it was drilled according to the size of the graft which was measured and it was looped around the petal and femoral side it was fixed and for the isometric point is very important that we all have all of us know and usually we measure the radio we use radiological uh, uh, scanograph uh, the by draw the line on the posterior cord of the femur and another line to the middle femoral condyle is like 2.5 million uh, millimeter anterior distal to that which was described and also we confirmed by the radiological uh, uh, scanogram in the intraoperatively theater we, we know how much pressure can be uh, there in the between the petal and femur so that the isometry is uh, okay or not and also we confirmed through the arthroscopy on all, all the patients so it helps more by seeing through the arthroscopy we know the how much tracking is happening it also helps in graft tensioning when we make a drill in the femoral side so that we can manual tension can be applied according to the uh, uh, moving, moving movement of the petal over the trochlea This is the final configuration of the double bundle technique, and it was fixed with the bio-observer screw. And this is one of the clinic examination. We can see that this uh, arthroscopy view how much the petal is subluxed, and more half of the petal is subluxation in the subluxed position. After reconstruction, we can see that the petal are tracking nicely in the trochlea. This is the preoperatively uh, uh, patient who had the uh, petal subluxation, where it can be easily reduced under 30 degrees of the flexion. is another example of the patient who had a no subluxation but you can see the huge opening in the medial side once you do a reconstruction they have a nice tracking of the patella with full range of movements and the good good functional outcome on follow up period from 27 months to the 5 years and the average follow up was 2 years 8 months no patient had recurrence of dislocation and average kujala score has improved from pre operative score of 52 to the final follow up of 90 and three patients had this stiffness where one patient had developed deep pain thrombosis which was managed with the anticoagulants and regained full range of movements after physiotherapy second patient was apprehensive but regained full range of movements after 9 months one patient underwent arthroscopic arthrolysis because we can see that some fibers banded in the medial gutter which was removed through arthroscopically and the patient regained full range of movements and uh, in our uh, in our series there are four cases of uh, mild trochlear dysplasia however does not compromise the outcome of mp reconstruction which is also shown in some other literature uh, that to take coming to the techniques there is a transverse single turn technique also with a good success rate but they have a disadvantage of difficulty with the placement of large single tunnel up to 6 to 7 mm which can be a risk of uh, petal of fracture so nowadays double bundle grade technique gives a good results because it reproduces the cyclic tightening and slackening pattern with the movements and also reported function, better functional outcome it also effectively limits the rotation throughout the range of movements which helps more aggressive rehabilitation protocols and early return to the activities and transverse double bundle technique uh, we can use that uh, transverse technique but it had two tunnels cost is an important factor because we had to use the two by observable screws and petal of fracture is a concern but now our technique where use the vertical incision and vertical technique doesn't need any fixation more anatomical and also gives that double bundle configuration which has got more advantage to conclude arthroscopic assisted double bundle vertical tunnel gives a zero dislocation rate and preoperative radiological assessment is important to exclude the bony abnormalities which may need additional distal realignment or bony procedure an arthroscopy helps in identify the cartilage integrity helps in removal of loose fragments and evaluation of the joint penetration and also it confirms the isometric fixation and the proper graft tensioning otherwise it can lead to the tightness of the joint or they may have a lax mpfl can leads to the uh, uh, excess or lax thank you for your patience the paper of dr sundar rajan is open for discussion <coughs> what, uh, what was your longest and shortest follow up sir 2 years 3 months is the shortest follow up sir Did you, what was your post-op protocol? So usually I put on a knee brace. I put, I told them to do a full weight bearing, but I do assisted uh, passive passive mobilization after two weeks. Then after six weeks we'll start assisted uh, extension movements. Then after twelve weeks full active extensions. Uh, it's a prospective study. It's a prospective case. So what were your inclusion? So inclusion all the patients within the radiological criteria which I told about the install index which is with less than one point two. at the same time the q angle which is if it is goes on more than uh, 20 which cannot be done as a 
only MPFL, it needs a distal realignment, but none of these patients require distal alignment because none of these patients Q angle is more than 20. Will you exclude any besides these two? Yes, sir. Have you excluded any other thing? No, sir. Did you anything to do with the condylar hyperplasia or anything? Uh, because this study is only on petal instability, sir. The patient which okay. has yeah, which, which has got, patient has got a petal dislocation. Suppose if it goes in, in the 60 degrees, if it dislocates, this is a different category, which, which these are not included in the study so at all. Yeah, that, that is what I am trying yes, to yes, say. Sir. Have you really defined your group yes, in sir. which you find those angles and then include it or else all one which does not have, uh, which are within the tangle? Yes, so we include only the petal instability cases which we had a radiological assessment. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Sir. Sundar Rajan. And with this, we come to the end of this session of Ketu Julaki Award session. I thank, along with my doc, uh, colleague, Dr. Sanjay J Rastogi, I thank everyone for your patient hearing, particularly to Dr. Jain and Dr. Junjanwala for their kind presence in this session. Thank you all, Sir. Thank you very much. Good morning, all of you. The topic is high TV loss taught me a study of 100 cases. Arthritis of knee becomes one of the frontliners among the causes of man's disablement. Arthritis may cause mild to moderate pain while pain at rest, joint stiffness and virus of valgus deformity. These may whistle the person from his job by preventing him from sitting cross legged squat or climbing the stairs. Anti-inflammatory drugs, physiotherapy and change in the lifestyle comprise a central part of the conservative treatment. Various surgical procedures like synovectomy, petalectomy, joint repairment, osteotomies, and joint placement have been described. The role of osteotomy has been studied for prompt relief of symptoms and thus make the patient able to lead a longer independent life. 100 patients have been operated, out of which 56 were females and 44 were males. Most of them died in the sixth decade. Most of them were sedentary workers. Most of them have complaints ranging between 1 to 2 years. Most of them have moderate to severe pain. Most of them have pain located on the medial side of the joint space. Mostly there was no history of trauma present. <coughs> this chart is showing the preoperative abilities of the patient. That is, distance walked limited in 35 patients, climbing stairs with difficulty, sitting in chair with difficulty, squatting nipple in 63 patients, sitting cross leg with difficulty while the use of it that is the leg 30 patients. The preoperative range of motion were good 0 to 120 degrees in most of the patients. The flexion deformity were less uh, than 10 degrees in most of the patients. The tibiofemoral alignment that is valgus of more than 10 degrees were present in 5 patients, virus of 1 to 5 in 47 patients, 6 to 10 degrees in 30 and more than 10 degrees Hundred osteotomies were done, out of which upper tibial osteotomies were 80 and dome osteotomies were 20. In 80 patients, valgus osteotomies were 75 while valgus were 5. The complications. Well, superficial infections were noticed in 12 patients, weakness of dorsiflexion of foot in 5, pain at the state of fibular osteotomy in 9. There were results, good were in 52, fair in 35, poor in 13. Now the method. Patients were anesthetized and tunica applied, lateral longitudinal incision given, and fibula ostromized, and disruption of the fibulotibular syndes muscle span. Wedge or desired size removed, with base being laterally for correction of the vast deformity. One millimeter of base for each one degree of correction. Deformity is corrected, and one or two staples are applied. Drain placed, wound closed in layers, and POP slab in corrected position was applied for 6 weeks. Results assessed according to Bailey Knee Assessment Scale. Average duration of follow-up for 5 years. Now, this slide is showing the lateral longitudinal curve incision for wedge osteotomy. The knee was held in slight flexion. The exposure of the head of the fibula done. The head of the fibula being ostromized obliquely. The guide wire was passed through the joint to assess the plane of tibial articular surface. The tibia being ostracized from the lateral side about 2 cm below the guide wire. 
the wedge rejected from the lateral side of the tibia. Insertion of the staple done after achieving the correction. Note that stapling impacted. Staples in position, wound closed in layers. Now, this is a view of X ray showing diminished joint space in the medial compartment with the varus of 7 degrees on left side. Immediate post op, the wedge of Chotney tibio femoral alignment has been made valgus by 5 degrees. Take X ray after 1 year, valgus is still maintained. Now, now you can see the patient can easily squat and sit cross legged. Uh, another X ray showing bilateral varus deformity at knee and diminished joint space on the medial side. Operated side is on the left with a varus of 7 degrees. Post of X ray in this dome of Jordan is done, the medial compartment has appeared and the fibula is being ostomatized on the upper third. This is the follow up for 3 months. After 3 months, valgus is still maintained, healing is in progress. After 9 months, now, this is the functional result. The patient can easily squat and sit cross leg. This is showing the involvement of the lateral compartment with the 15 degrees of valgus and the flexion deformity at knee. Immediate post op showing the wedge uh, rejection from the medial side and the space in the lateral compartment is created. Valgus is reduced to 6 degrees. 14 months follow up, osteotomy site is healing. Now the patient can squat easily. Pre op x ray showing the valgus deformity and the diminished joint space on the medial side in the left knee. Immediate post op showing the intra articular fracture of the lateral condyle of tibia. This occurred while attempting the correction in wedge osteotomy. Check x ray after 3 months, healing is in progress, valgus is maintained. After 18 months, this is the functional results. Another case, same, virus deformity is there. Staples are applied, immediate post op. 3 months follow up, medial joint space has appeared. Another case, one year follow up, 5 years. The joint space, as you can see, is still there. Now, all patients were benefited by surgery in terms of relief of pain. Very old and obese patients showed poor results after the surgery due to their inability to do required physiotherapy. Patients having symptoms for shorter duration or of showing early evidence of radiological changes responded to surgery better as compared to those having advanced changes. Patients with 1 to 10 degrees of post-operative valgus in TV femoral alignment obtain maximum pain relief and good range of motion. Overcorrection and failure to achieve valgus show poor results. Thank you. Right. Sessions open for questions, please. Yeah. So anyway, how did you standardize taking these measurements? Yeah. And there are uh, various methods for measuring. First, no, no, okay, okay, fine. First, we take the pre of x ray of the whole thing, right? We see it in the standing position. We need to take the disc. First, we need at the standing x rays. We draw a line from the head of the femur. Then, it should pass through the mid of the femoral joint and then it extends to the that is known as the mechanical axis of the femur. Okay, fine. This is the uh, pre operative, this thing. And the tibial axis, this is not known as the mechanical axis of the femur. Now, that's okay. You have an average follow up of 5 years, but you showed only one case of 14 months follow up. <coughs> yes. At okay. least you have shown a few cases with 5 years uh, follow up. All right. When you know, it is very well mentioned literature that older people and obese people have poor results. Yes. Why did you include this patient in your series? Because I would just want to show that older patients are too benefited from this type of surgeries. It is not that only the lean and thin. They have got the better outcome if they had come, if they are lean. But older patients are still benefited and if they have the cost restraint, they can be done. How much did you apply plaster to these patients? Yes, for six weeks. Six weeks. Is it that uh, six weeks is too short a duration? Because the, in, in one case you showed for nine months mm -hmm. and you cited your short healing. Mm -hmm. 
Some yes, after the uh, six weeks of plaster, we get the greatest uh, followed by another one month. So, when do you expect that patient uh, could be relieved of his pain if he asks the question? It is a time taking process and it, it varies from uh, person to person. Whether uh, he is uh, uh, being, uh, following our commands uh, regularly and doing the physical therapy with some, a, There is some duration. Yeah. But yes, this for six months, nine months. Eighty percent or seventy to eighty percent of the relief uh, patients from pain will be done in two to three months. You know, this takes more time, and to get the movements, you are giving plaster for six weeks, then you are giving braces. Okay, I invite the next speaker.